Um, so, in this video, I actually want to get into the discussing um, OOP, um, or Object Oriented Programming, in Lua. Um, and there's different ways of doing this. I'm going to go ahead and show you the way I came up with it. Um, and essentially, what I came, I wanted to uh, use more of what Lua actually has to do this. Um, because there are whole modules. If you look up, you know, um, object-oriented programming in Lua, you're going to find that that is a huge subject. Um, there's, you know, a bunch of different modules. There are ones that are pretty popular. Um, and even I kind of encourage to look those up, look through the documentation on it, maybe even mess with it a little while. I'm sure you can actually find the tutorials for any given module that's popular. Um, <coughs> And you know to help kind of understand but uh, for me I wanted I really dug into um, how does it work under the hood and how can I actually do this um, when you just start talking just object-oriented programming I mean to an extent it's not super complicated um, but Lua kind of has a weird way of doing it um, you know most uh, languages or at least higher level languages it would just you just literally use the inherit keyword when you want to inherit things whereas like you can see here i've got a, a, a function i've written just to inherit um and then again you know a class is generally callable automatically um and whereas here i've got to have a function to set that up i mean again you can actually program that in directly into the modules um, and some of those, you know, the modules that I just got, you know, that I said that are set up just to do object-oriented programming, um, do it more that way. Um, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you actually find one of those modules and thinks that, you know, it makes way more sense to you that, you know, by all means do it that way. There's, you know, there's always a different way to do something. And if, you know, my way doesn't make sense to you, but another way does, you know, you're not going to hear any grief from me. I, you know, I get that. Um, but, uh, you know, I just kind of stuck with how can I do this in Lua and do it the way, you know, using what Lua gives me without having to use a separate module just for that. And then, it, you know, again, even doing that, it, you know, it seemed like it was it turned out to be a lot easier to write functions so I didn't have to always remember this stuff. Um, because there, you know, when I first tried to, like, make a callable object, um, when I followed the tutorial exactly and even just cut, you know, copy and pasted code, I could get it working for a little while, but because I didn't understand the meta tables well enough, um, and then even just hadn't played with it long enough to understand, you know, that there are certain times when things have to be in the meta table, otherwise it will not work and call this call function or this call meta method is one of those things. Um, and I really couldn't tell you which one's a hundred percent. I know, um, like to string and concatenate are ones that actually do work um, directly in the class. So like if these were in a meta table, it wouldn't work. Um, it wouldn't call those for some reason. But if you put them directly in your table, then it works. But whereas call for some reason, the call meta method, it has to be directly in the meta table. Otherwise, you know, it just doesn't do it correctly. It won't actually call anything. It'll just tell you, you know, attempt to call a table or whatever, you know, kind of thing, um, when it throws an error. Um, and, uh, you know, fair warning, this video is definitely going to be long. Um, there's just no way around that, um, other than try and break it up. So, like, really in this first video, we're just going to discuss how this works. We're not even going to code any objects yet, um, because, it, you know, like I said, this is going to be long. This is actually my second attempt on this video. The first time, you know, after, really, I was in the middle of editing, and it was just like, uh, I just got so, jar you know, garbled up that I was just like, I need to just start over. Um, plus, I was calling these meta properties, and that's, that is not correct. Um, these are meta methods, every one of these. Um, when they've got this double underscore, well, I can't guarantee that. Um, but what we're using here are technically meta methods. Um, and if you look up Lua meta method, you'll see, you know, that, that is a huge subject by itself. Um, there's just all kinds of things like this. Index one, 
it actually, even though we're setting it to a table here, um, as goofy as that seems, that is actually, this is a function. And what it does is it passes, um, it will pass the object and then a key. Uh, and then like a new index is another one. Um, and that's how you assign things. So like when you would actually say, you know, parent dot or, you know, object dot value equals, you know, two, um, this right here would actually call the new index value uh, or new index meta method. Um, and then that would, it would pass the object, a key and a value um, to that function. But we are actually setting it to this table and that'll tell it that, you know, to use that index, you know, to, so it'll end up just calling index on this thing, which, uh, you know, I know this would, you know, look super weird and the way I'm explaining it isn't the best. Um, but just know to actually make things a callable object, this is, you have to do it this way. Otherwise it will not, you know, the, the call function will not work later on down the line. Um, so that's why it's kind of set up this way. Um, and again, I definitely suggest, you know, looking up Lua meta methods and kind of dig through some of the other material that you can find on that. Um, definitely on the Lua.org website is a good one. Um, but, uh, you know, just know that in this video, you don't need to absorb everything all at once. There was no way I ever would have. Um, when this video was done, I'll guarantee when I was starting out, I could sit and watch this video 10 freaking times. Um, and even over a span of you know weeks and slowly absorb it and even then I still wouldn't get it all um, there would still be bits and pieces I just I would not understand so if you find yourself at that point you know don't start pulling out your hair and think you know you can't do this because um, by all means if I had thought that I would have given up years ago and I wouldn't even be here to be able to explain badly what I'm gonna explain to you um, it just, you know, it's such a complicated subject in general, object-oriented programming even. Um, but then when you're talking about it in Lua, it gets even a little more complicated just because of how you have to do it to make it work in Lua. Um, <coughs> because essentially what you'll, you know, the word you might hear when you start looking up meta method or meta table is um, this is, you know, how, you know, some of the underlying magic of Lua and how it works. Um, so like if we actually inherit, so say, um, and eventually basically what we will do is kind of make our own, our own objects. I do want to eventually go through kind of all of these. Um, and we'll slowly do that, you know, like I said, actually start, we won't actually worry about coding these up until the next tutorial probably because this one's just going to be a ridiculous video. Um, but so we've got, you know, this is where I actually set a function that is required for making new instances of an object. Um, you could even kind of just ignore this part for now because essentially it just takes two tables. Um, in this case, self would be object. Um, again, I told you, you could get rid of that parameter and just do it that way. But to me, that doesn't stick out well enough. Um, or it may have been in a video I didn't end up using. Anyway. Um, you could do it that way. I just prefer this notation because to me this just stands out more. So that way I know that this one requires me when I call it to do it in this kind of way. You know, I have to use that notation or actually I would have to do, you know, class.new and then pass it class and then whatever other parameters that, you know, new is going to take. Um, so funny enough, when I'm calling it, I, I like doing it this way because it just makes more sense. But when I'm writing the actual function, I prefer this notation. Um, so I just don't want you to get confused by that. Um, some of this stuff I'll kind of go over, but you can more or less ignore for now. Um, but you can kind of see all we do is we take the base object and we're looking for a table. If it's not a table, and in, in this case I allow the new function to also just pass me the name of the object. So the only parameter I take is a string that I assume it's the name um, and then we'll make a new table setting the name of the object otherwise you could set underlying values and that kind of thing and pass me a you know a large table if you wanted to um, an example of that would be say the teleporter 
um, because this this settings object is a callable object and so we just pass it a table here to give it you know it's it's new settings even though all of these are actually set in that object to give it defaults um, but these will overwrite it because ultimately the the actual settings class becomes the meta table for this table and um, that's just part of the way Lua works um, so what happens actually in that kind of thing is so if we have let's go back to that symbol one um that symbol it won't be super clear if i'm talking about new because i do override the new function to do something a little differently and you can do that you can override things essentially um but so like this symbol class i've got you know a function for get address and register symbol and unregister symbol but then now we can go into this uh memory object and um, this making it a callable object also takes a second parameter and that will be what it inherits from so in this case the memory object inherits from the symbol object and so that way like you can even see here these are some of the settings that I have and I'm just reminding myself that it inherits these um, just so I you know can kind of keep track of it um, and you don't necessarily have to do that, especially if there's a lot of settings I really honestly wouldn't do that. I think I just did this when I was first setting this up so I didn't forget what the defaults were. Um, but at any rate, so then at that point when we're working with this memory object, we still have those, you know, get address and um, register symbol and unregister symbol. But then I can add new functions to it and make it you know larger more you know more complex and that kind of thing um, and that's kind of where the inheritance part of object oriented programming comes in you know because you can inherit things and do that um, really the bigger subject is like using this self because uh, when you're talking OPP the idea is we create a new instance every time we want a new memory object and so that way while I have these defaults um, we can set them in each instance of an object and it won't change things in other, you know, in the other objects because if we just use just the table and just did kind of a, a you know, a large um, module that doesn't, you know, doesn't take instances, anything I change in like this one um, will take effect across, you know, the entire board. Um, Whatever is using this file object, so to speak, uh, it's more global. You know, there's only one object ever, and I can't create new ones. Um, you know, it's always the same object each time. Whereas with like this, uh, because of the way this uh, callable object uses that new function and the way this new function works. Um, and really even in this symbol and um, the way that new function works it actually you know we, we create a new instance of the object either you pass it to me you know a new table or I'm gonna create a new table um, and then I just take that new table and then I set the you know in this case the symbol class will become its meta table and then this way even though technically this um, new you know the object here doesn't have any of these functions you didn't set any of this stuff um, you just maybe given it a name and in this case that would really be the only parameter you'd want to set here is um well no yeah there's a couple here um don't save and target self so you could tell me you know the name is this um you know pass it a table where name is set to whatever don't save is set to true target self is set to true um and then we would take that base object you're passing me and then using this we kind of make it to where it inherits now from the symbol class and that'll make your that base object a new instance of the symbol class essentially um, and then uh, with the meta tables what happens in Lua under the hood so if we call if we take our our object that we created a new one of and then call get address um, it will look at that object you created the instance and say okay there is no get address function 
So then it will look for a meta table. If there is a meta table, then it will look for that function in that meta table. And um, the way Lua works is it'll just keep going down that line. If that function didn't exist here in symbol, say like we're doing that with memory, you know, it doesn't have that get address. So even though the object you pass me doesn't have get address, it'll look into the memory, you know, the meta table, which will be this memory class um, or this memory table, really. Um, and look for that get address function. It'll see that it doesn't have it either, but it does have a meta table set, and it'll be this symbol class. And so then it says okay, and then it looks in that secondary, you know, the meta table of the meta table, and looks for that get address function. And at that point, it finally hits our symbol class, and then it's like okay, there is a function here. Um, and it would keep doing that until there wasn't a meta table anymore, and then if it didn't find anything at that point, that's when it would throw an error and tell you that the function, you know, trying to call a nil value. Because there is, there is no, you know, there wouldn't be a function if we, you know, called function does not exist, uh, or, you know, no function or something like that, that's what would happen. Um, and it would go through every single one of the, you know, the meta tables of whatever table you're trying to do that with. Um, so that's kind of what's under the hood there. Um, like I said, a lot of higher level languages, uh, all that would just be, you know, using the inherit, you know, using an inherit keyword generally is how that'll work. Um, really, actually, I want to say just about anything that is, you know, I, I don't remember C++ super well, so I won't talk about that or even C. Um, but certainly C Sharp just uses a, an inherit keyword. Um, it may not actually be inherit, it's been a while, but anyway. Um, you know, and VV, you know, Visual Basics use uh, an inherit keyword, and you know, uh, you name a, you know, uh, Python does that, and a lot of languages work that way. Um, Lua does not give you an inherit keyword. I kind of wish they did make it a little simpler, but it's just the way Lua works. It was always meant to be small, lightweight, so it could be embedded in things. I think originally, I don't know if I've discussed this already, or if I didn't use that video, but Lua, the way I remember reading about it, it was, or what I remember reading about it, it um, was originally designed like in the 70s in Brazil, I think it was, uh, to extend applications. You know, back in the day when um, there wasn't nearly as many applications out there to do specific things, and companies needed a program to do some really specific stuff instead of, you know, wanting to code up their whole program uh, you know, someone that had wrote a program could embed Lua in it, you know, this small lightweight language, and then they could add to it. And um, you still essentially see that with Lua. I mean, of course, Cheat Engine does that. A lot of games do that. Um, I've worked with embedded, con you know, controller devices and industrial stuff that has Lua embedded in it um, and all that kind of stuff. So, it, you know, that's the power of Lua is kind of how lightweight it is. But at the same time, with those meta tables and that kind of stuff, they give you the power to do an awful lot if that's what you want to do. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of what we're doing with these two functions here. Is we're just we're making use of that meta table function. Because um, even here, making it a callable object, we inherit. Um, but as you can see here, when we inherit, while you might pass a parent object, um, I always, you know, to make it a true callable object, the meta table itself, you know, the first instance of a meta table um, has to have this call meta method. Otherwise, it will not work when you try to make it a callable, you know, when you try to call um, settings or symbol or whatever, you know, the actual object itself to, you know, say local sim equals symbol. You know, you wouldn't be able to do it this way, you know, without that call meta method in the meta table. Otherwise, you would always have to do new and then work with it from there. Um, and actually, the way that function is set up, you have to do it that way. And then, you know, some name. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, and admittedly, when I was first working with um, this, you know, I, I ignored the call ball object because it just, I, I didn't understand it. Um, and I could get it working but then as soon as I started trying to modify things too much I would usually not understand that meta table um, well enough and I, and I would break it and it wouldn't work so I just would always fall back to this um, 
and if you would prefer to do that just because it makes more sense to you that's fine there's there you know like i said i did that so i you know i wouldn't worry too much about that kind of thing um but i do want to go over it and explain it and that way you can set up your objects that way so that way you know it just to me it makes more sense to create a new instance of the symbol in that way i mean i guess it new doesn't hurt because it does it is pretty you know explicit but we can also make it a little neater looking um and show off you know our skill as a coder when you're done when you actually learn this stuff um but like i said you don't need to absorb all of this in one go i would definitely say come back to this before you know sooner rather than later and you know like i told you i'd have to watch it a bunch of times um and don't feel like you're you know you're the only one because i was in the same boat um but it's just uh, opp programming is such a complicated sub i mean I don't know if complicated is really the right word, but it is such a large subject that there just is no getting around really hammering on some key points. Um, and then when you get to Lua, then all of a sudden it's like just to be able to work OPP is, you know, even if you don't discuss, you know 100% of what OPP is. Um, say you actually know it better than me and, you know, you're picking up on some key things that I'm not explaining correctly or may not actually even be a part of OPP to some extent. It's just my misunderstanding of it, and that's entirely possible. Um, because I'm definitely, I'm not a professional programmer by any means. I didn't go to school for it or any of that. Um, I, I technically have taken some classes for those embedded devices, but, uh, but you know, that was usually with a bunch of other hairy dudes sitting in a class that didn't know shit about programming, and I was like the whiz kid because I you know, new Lua from Cheat Engine. Um, even though I wouldn't even use that word. <laughs> Just not as bright uh, as I'd like to be. But anyway, um, so, you know, talking about this, you know, like I said, there's just no way of getting around this video being huge. Um, I'm thinking we're already a half hour in or, you know, getting pretty long into this video and we haven't even started discussing these functions that I want to talk about yet or how they work. And so on that note, let's go ahead and actually dig into, um, we're really just going to start with these. I know you might be seeing um, like this check self and stuff like that. We'll go into something like that more when we actually start coding these. Um, just know underlying what it's doing is it's making sure that this object is, in this case, it's actually checking to make sure that what we, you know, the, the self object is an actual object, you know, part of this object class, essentially, or, or you know, whatever word you prefer to use there. Um, and then, it, you know, it, it will iterate through meta tables to find, so that way if we call this, you know, we could call this in here and actually pass it the object name, you know, class name, and it will iterate through the meta tables until it finds a class name that matches what we're trying to get here. So that's all we're doing is just checking to make sure that this object, either it or one of its meta tables has a class name that is set to the right class name that we're looking for. So that way we can know that certain functions will be there and this is of the right object. And in this case, it's just more or less making sure you don't, you use the correct notation when you're you use the correct notation when you're calling new. And, um, I'm messing myself up here, sorry. Um, so, you know, that's all that's really doing. It's just kind of making sure things are what they're supposed to be. Um, because I just know I've done that too many times, so that's where I why I came up with this. Because when I started doing this, uh, you know, it's just way too often that, like, in this new thing, you know, I would actually do that. And then the table that I pass it isn't the correct class, it, you know, so things won't work the way they're supposed to, so I just, I want to make sure I throw an error and can handle that um, and know right away that that's where the problem is. Um, even that's, I'm getting way over here. Um, okay, so moving on. So let's uh, actually look at just this inherit, you know, um, 
the inherit function first because the callable object function uses that. Um, and basically we're just setting some meta methods here. I know it's technically setting a meta method to a table and even that, I mean, it has honestly never made sense to me why that works because I would think this would cause it to get in some infinite loop. Um, but it does not. It is this actually works. And actually doing it this way allows it to where each time we inherit, we can inherit and actually get what we need there. Um, otherwise, for some reason, like if you take this one out, it will break the, uh, the callable object. I have no, I still don't understand why, but it absolutely does. Um, and then same thing with this one. Um, because this one you actually, actually I don't think this one will break the, I think this one will break some other inheritance. Um, but it, it, you know, it can still be a callable object without this. But when you go to look up a function that doesn't exist in, you know, class, it won't correctly look in um, parent for some reason. I, I, again, I don't honestly understand why. I wish I did and I could explain it to you, but I just, I, I still don't understand that. Um, to me, this is what was really important, I always thought. But that was why I had such a hard time with it in the beginning, because I didn't get these. And, I, you know, I like, don't feel bad if you don't. And anybody that absolutely does understand this or knows something good to go look at this, um, feel free to let me know in the comments because I, I would love to understand why when I don't use these that you know it just breaks things all of a sudden because again I, I would keep you know to me I just this never made sense to me so I wouldn't put it in and then things would break and I couldn't understand why um, but it was playing with it enough I finally figured out that yeah I have to have these indexes set to their own object or things do not work the way I think they should or the way that Lua tells me it should with the inheritance and you know looking up in the meta tables and all that um, but then all we really do is so we set those two indexes and then we just set our meta table on our class to the parent so that way in the end it does fully inherit from that parent and anything that parent has in it you know property or uh, really just uh, value um, variable or functions will then be accessible just from the class um, and so then when we actually do the callable object here what we're doing is first we create our own meta table because like I said this call meta method absolutely has to be in the meta table it can't be inherited down the line. It, it has to be in the meta table of every object that you want to make callable. Um, and to me it seemed like it should have been if I put this in that base object class and everything else inherits through that uh, you know on down the line so symbol from object and memory from symbol it should work but it just does not um, to make it callable. Uh, and that's you know I want to say there was one other thing I kind of came across that was similar like that when I was messing with it, um, but I honestly don't remember. I just know in the end I was more worried about making callable objects. Um, and if you do look into the meta method, you can do some really interesting and complex things with this uh, index and even new index. Um, you can kind of see here I'm actually making, you know, I can make a table read only by using this. And I'm just setting new index to a function that throws an error to tell you that it's read only so I mean you can kinda get rather complicated with uh, meta tables and the meta methods but um, for now we're just gonna really worry about this call one um, and kind of index <coughs> at least as much as I understand about it but so essentially when we we set our meta table or we create our meta table here and then I just allow this callable object function to also allow an inheritance um, so that way otherwise you'd have to actually call you know callable object class and then inherit parent blob you know on down the line and I you know I, did, I wanted to make it look cleaner in the end like you kind of see here or even here um, so that's kind of what we're doing here so we create our meta table and we make the meta table in the end it's going to inherit from whatever the parent is that's being passed but then we just set one thing in this meta table and that is the um, call meta method 
and all we're doing there, all that does is pass, you know, and you know, two objects really. Uh, now I take that back. Um, it passes the object itself, whatever you're calling. So, like in that example, when I was showing you how we would create a new symbol by calling symbol itself, in that case, it would actually pass the symbol object um, or the the class, and then whatever other parameters you pass to that, you know, that that object allows to be passed to it in the beginning will be passed. In most cases with me it's mostly just going to be this would just be a single table and that's it. Um, and sometimes just like with this object even and I even do this, a similar thing with the symbol um, I allow the first and only parameter to either be a table or a string which would be always be the name. Um, other than that you know, and yeah, again, you can get super complicated and allow multiple parameters for, you know, some default settings, um, you know, however you want to do it, uh, you know, uh, symbol, I could, we could allow it to be, you know, name, you know, s you know, don't save, target cell, and that kind of thing, um, but to me, it w it's always cleaner to actually just make it either, you know, a name, some, one thing really simple, or a table. Um, so that way you explicitly set it, kind of like I showed you with that teleporter when it's calling that symbols object, or that settings object, you know. And, and same thing here, we got our allocated memory, and then you can even see a memory object here. Um, we actually pass it a table with some settings set. And then that way, this, you know, that table is our instance of the object, and then it's just, in the end, it makes that instance of an object inherit from memory. Um, so that way it gets access to everything in that memory class, so to speak. Um, and then from there, all we do is we just return whatever the class new function returns. Um, and then that becomes your called, you know, that's what the callable object returns, which in, you know, should always be the uh, new instance of the object, which, as I was showing here, that's what's happening. Um, you take whatever, either a table they pass, or we create a new table, which is our new instance, um, and then set the, you know, the necessary things, and here, in this case, we got to set that index, um, and then we just create, you know, set the meta table on that instance to the the object class and then return that object back or return that instance of the object back. Um, and that, you know, hopefully that's not too confusing. Um, I mean, like I said, basically you just need to know that this function returns an instance of an object. Um, whether you create it or it gets created in this function. And then from there, it's just, you know, however complicated you want to make things to inherit down the line is up to you, you know. Um, there's, you know, just so many different things you can do with this kind of thing. And, and I do encourage you to even not just look up Lua OPP programming. Um, if you know another language and you just haven't really looked up that subject, but you still have inherited things, I even do some reading on that because... Um, understanding what OPP is all about um, or I keep saying OPP <laughs> that's an old song or band or whatever um, OOP object oriented programming um, is you know it's it's such a huge subject in general even when you're not even talking any specific language um, I hell I want to say if you actually took a computer science uh, you know, went to school for that. I'm pretty sure, the, as I understand it, there are whole courses dedicated to this subject, where you will spend an entire year learning what object-oriented programming is, you know, and, you know, I don't know what they do in those exactly, so I'm not going to get into that, because, like I said, I have not gone to school for this stuff, um, but it's just, it's such a huge subject, um, Hopefully I'm not overly confusing you, but in the end, that's what we're going to do, is we're going to, you know, um, I will say these will be ones for now, I would almost just say, uh, when we get to that point, I'll put up snippets, 
because I just know like even if I retype these to kind of go you know through it a little better I, I'm almost certain I would make a mistake somewhere and then just confuse the crap out of people or have to re-edit the video 20 times until I get it perfect um, because I know even when I was setting these up it you know I didn't type up this function in one setting um, I want to say this was you know not only did I likely take a few times to get this function working but I'm thinking this was actually like my third or fourth time trying to make callable objects work correctly on Lua and make it work every time where no matter what object I was trying to use this on it is callable um, because it just it took me forever to really understand and I still don't understand it 100 percent you know I don't know if I ever freaking will um, but so we'll go over you know um, I guess we've kind of gone over what it does but it, you know when we actually get to the point of creating an object I'll add these functions as um, snippets I may even at that point go over some of these check functions um, these are just more for decent air handling um, at the very least definitely just check self because it, it will save you some trouble uh, this way if you do make like like I said that typo where you use a period when you needed to use a colon um, it will save you some headache because it'll tell you right away um, we'll go into that more in the next video I just don't want this video to be two or three freaking hours long um, and again everything in this video if, if you're not getting it all don't feel too you know don't feel like you have to I guarantee a I'm just not explaining it as well as someone that really really understood this could but I'm just trying to pass on the knowledge I have and keep it specific to uh, cheat engine and that kind of thing um, and then yeah and then at that point we'll we'll start with our base object here um, it's not entirely needed uh, to be honest with you because if we when we do the symbol you'll see I end up overriding the new function which is the only thing set here um, but I still will still set this up so when you use callable object you know you can actually you don't have to always set a new function if this is all it does because I do end up doing that with uh, um, actually I think that grouped memory does that Not too far back. So, like this group memory, because it works a little differently, and uh, essentially it actually requires a list of memory objects, but um, it inherits from object, and it just keeps me from having to write a new, you know, a, you know, a new function or the new function for each object, the one that returns an instance of the object. Um, so that's really the only reason for the object uh, class here and then um, from there we'll probably go ahead and just start down this line and you know so then create this symbol um, not super needed but it just does do some different things that way you know you can always use the same function and either tell it to you know error on fail so it'll use get address or if we don't set error on fail then it'll just use get address safe so that way it'll return nil if it doesn't find an address <coughs> and then here you can kind of see all it's doing is just using the name that we set as the simple name that's part of the reason for overriding this is to get rid of any spaces um, or yeah I remember there was it didn't work correctly if I used uh, dashes I had to use underscore so I automatically uh, sanitize the name and this function is all we're doing here that's different really um, different from the new in the object um, but uh, then we'll go over this kind of thing um, creating the symbol and then on down the line to memory um, and that way the idea is when you create a memory object you can just set its name and I'll call register symbol then you know then you can start calling um, any of these functions and you can actually the way this one works is it allows a type um, and these are actually just the base thing this is this uh, you know I have this table here that I'm using uh, you can see here that the memory types are the same as the 
Cheat Engine 1. So, you know, just BT Byte, BT Word, BT D Word, and on down the line. Um, and whether you do it that way or just code it with just those, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, but then that allows you to not only have access to all these, uh, to where you explicitly, in case you prefer writing it that way, but then it does give you a way to just, you know, say memory.read. And that way it'll determine what type it is and then use the correct function to read that value. Um, not super necessary, but I do think this will be a decent area to start when talking OPP. Or OOP, sorry. I'm so sorry I keep saying that wrong. <laughs> I just went up to listen to that song. Um, anyway, and then we'll, we'll go on down the line. Um, at some point, maybe we'll do this group memory because it is kind of handy for vectors. Um, I actually, if we do that teleporter, I probably will definitely want to go over those because it, you know, the teleporter uses that. So that way we can, yeah, you can just say read all and get a table of values. Um, anyway, um, that's kind of the road ahead. Um, hopefully I didn't make this too confusing on just the base knowledge of what's going to be necessary to understand for the OOP programming in Lua um, and even you know making things a callable object um, but I do think when you when you learn that stuff and then we can make callable objects um, and like especially once you've got this function it just makes life easier when you're trying to make a callable object because you don't have to remember all that you just literally just have to call a callable object and then this even tells you right away, you know, you don't have to know that that's what's happening here. Like if we had this going on inside um, the module, you wouldn't have to know what's actually happening under the hood there. You can just read that word callable object and know that, okay, this is a callable object. Um, and then in my case, know that, you know, because of the way the new is working, that that also makes it to where you get a new instance of the object when you do that. Um, and to me, under in my head, that's, you know, callable objects should always do that. It should never do something else. But there might be an example where you want to have a full module that's callable and not necessarily use, like, that new method. And there you would have to, you, you couldn't, you'd have to do a different function um, or just set new to do something completely different. Um, but that would allow you to, you know, make a, a more complicated table structure that works like a function. And essentially that's what we do here. I mean, that's, you know, under the hood, that's what's going on is we just make it where when we call this object it calls that new function and that's what's happening um, and how you you know I, I just prefer to keep callable objects always be an instancing object because um, that just makes more sense to me uh, of course however you want to do it is up to you um, anyway uh, this video is probably getting ridiculous already uh, so yeah we'll, we'll go over it more even when we start doing this um, and again, like I said, I would come back to this video even. Um, don't feel like you need to just sit here and watch it over and over and over again until you get it all because there's no way in hell I would do I would pull that off when I was first starting out with this kind of subject. Um, so we'll just kind of move along and start making our objects and then this way we can start working with them. And then, you know, hopefully down that line, when you get to a certain point, you can come back to this video, watch it again, and more things will click and make sense. Um, and you'll kind of understand it a little better. And if you do get all this in one go, kudos to you, dude, because holy shit. <laughs> I mean, just, oh my god. But anyway, um, so yeah, the next video will actually get into making an object. Um, I don't depending upon length it, it may have to be multiple videos to go through all these I think it certainly it will be multiple videos to go through all of them but we might be able to get to like object and then symbol and then down the line and these we will be coding more directly um, or at the very least just going over them 
in more in depth as what you know to what's actually going on in every single function and explain you know like what I'm doing with these tables here and and all that kind of stuff um, but like I said I just kind of wanted to start covering you know the inheritance and how that works and then how making a callable object works you know and the, the meta tables how those kind of work and um, just to you know because it is important to understand that or at least have a basic grasp on it um, before we start otherwise none of this will make sense um, I mean, I guess really once you've got these two functions, it, it kind of can. You don't necessarily, you know, even if you don't understand these functions at all, you can use them. Um, that's certainly possible. Because I can tell you these functions do actually work. I, I'm using them in quite a few of my modules. And I've already made tables for a few games now um, using all these new modules I've set up. And I, so I've done some decent testing with it and even got people using the tables and it's all working fine. So. Um, but, uh, you know, I just, I, wa I want you to actually learn it, um, because you're just using my modules, I mean, that, that's cool and all, and they're handy, and I, you know, if, if that's what you want to do down the road when I finally release all this stuff, um, there's, you know, there's no reason not to, really, but I do want you to be able to kind of code your own modules and your own stuff, I mean, um, especially if you're making trainers and stuff like that. Um, on that note, I'm not super good with UIs. I mean, I, I mess with them a little bit, like, you, you know, on that tool I showed in the last video, or technically second to the last video, where we were using that uh, table file packer tool. I mean, I do make some forms and mess with some stuff, but I'm just not real well versed with the, um, the, the Cheat Engine Lua UI elements, because I just don't tend to, I prefer tables. Being completely honest, I just don't like... I don't care for making trainers because it's just a lot of tedious work with messing with UIs to make it look right when it's like I can just make a memory record and I'm done. <laughs> you know? um, but that's up to you. I'm not knocking you if you want to make trainers. Um, some people, and there are people that absolutely prefer to use trainers even. So we, we need trainer makers out in the world anyway. Um, but, so yeah, you know, we'll we'll get through these and then just kind of see what what seems like it's the best thing to to go from there um and don't feel like you know i mean i do want you to code these things up um you don't necessarily have to do all of it um especially like this memory i mean you, you know the way the functions work under the hood, uh, you, you know, you can kind of skip some of this just so you kind of get a grasp on the uh, object-oriented program. That's really the big thing I want to want to get through and um, get you to understand at least enough to where you can, you know, know how to do it, know the, you know, have a pretty good grasp on how it works. Um, and, he, and no, even I'm in that same boat. I, I you know, that, I mostly just have a pretty good grasp on how it works, you know. Um, I'm not an expert by any standard. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the road ahead, and hopefully I won't yammer on too much. Um, but anyway, on to the next.